Should you use AI generated art in your apps, games, designs, and other artworks? This is a controversial topic. I made another video about putting AI in games and it struck some nerves. I'm a writer by trade, I get it. AI is putting a lot of designers and artists out of work. But I'm also an aspiring game developer and app programmer with a shoestring budget who needs assets and artwork, cheap or free if possible. And the source for some of those images may be AI generated. As a programmer, I need to get art where I can. If you don't like AI art, you don't have to look at it. But I will use whichever tools I can to make my games as efficient and cost effective as possible. So that includes using AI for code and assets. So is AI art any good? I don't think I need to tell you how great some of these image generators are getting, and they're getting even better by the day. You can even make videos now with tools like Sora. Eventually, whole movies could probably be made by AI. If you're a creative, if you design things or sell anything online, there are countless uses of AI art. You can use AI art for book illustrations, book covers, design patterns, patterns for decorations, ideas for stories. I've used it to make a train themed menu for a party before a train ride as a very highly specific use case. It can help you come up with designs for physical products you may manufacture or develop. If you're a sculptor, it can help you make photorealistic images of what you may aspire your sculptures to be. Just look at these magnificent jade and stoneware concepts made in Leonardo.ai. Any of these could be replicated by you. The same goes for painting ideas. You may want to make a painting of a historical figure, perhaps your favorite singer. Sometimes you just want a photo of Charles Grodin in a restaurant booth for some reason. You're free to copy these with your own paintbrush. AI can help you figure out the layout of an app or a program like an art program, for example complete with the user interface and user interface elements such as buttons, menu items, and even icons for the app. Use AI to design board games, both pieces and backgrounds for the board. You can, of course, use AI art for games such as mobile games or games that you're designing on other platforms, provided the platform allows AI art. You can use it for design concepts, characters, backgrounds, you can do this even if you're going to have a real person eventually use designs to make the art. The AI is not perfect. It doesn't always give you what you're asking for. It makes mistakes. Sometimes the AI gets things wrong. It hallucinates. And other times the results are, let's just go with nightmarish. But generally, you can make it generate almost anything you want within the limits of the rules in terms of service of the image generator. Then, with some Photoshop skills, you can clean the image up, fix the small mistakes. Now, with editors on ChatGPT and MidJourney, you can edit selected portions of the image and change just the things that you want that would be difficult to do in Photoshop without some pretty hefty graphic design skills. So how do you make it work? Getting good output with these generators requires providing a good input. Tell it exactly what you want. With platforms like Leonardo and Midjourney, you can even tell it what you don't want in a negative prompt. Be specific, use trial and error, and eventually you get something you can use. So what do you do with the game artwork? Well, ask ChatGPT. You can get code for the games or apps, put it together how ChatGPT tells you to, follow its tutorials, put it all together, include the artwork by putting it in the right folders, and getting the code to use the images properly. And then test your app, of course. Some caveats about using AI art. Don't generate AI art and claim you made it by hand. Disclaim it's AI where you need to. Never infringe on trademarks or copyrights. Sometimes the image generators can get close to infringement. Can you see the issue with this generated image? Have you found Waldo yet? If you're going to make a game or book similar to Where's Waldo or something, you'd better change it up enough for it to be substantially different. That is your responsibility. Same with using images for games. Your prompts to be on the safe side should never include trademarks. Don't ask it to make characters from Halo. Ask it instead to make futuristic soldiers on an alien landscape or describe the character you want without using copyrights or even describing it too similarly 
to trademark intellectual property and go from there. Or use the images and modify them enough that they turn into something completely different. For example, these images were originally from Bungie's first major game, Marathon, the game that started the Halo franchise. The AI was prompted to modify them enough so the end result looks nothing like the original. But it got it started. Also, if the platform forbids AI, there isn't much you can do except to make sure all images are your own and look nothing like AI. Because the only way to block a game is by some disgruntled employee thinking your art looks like AI, even if it might not be. Because there are no detectors that are accurate and reliable at this time. I recommend using ChatGPT for images because your images will be private. Other generators post your images publicly unless you pay for the higher tiers. So those public images might be used against you. So keep the images private so they only exist on your own game. Also, like I said in my other video, use assets that are cheap or free if you can't afford to design or expensive assets. There are other alternatives. GameArt.org and other sites have art that may not even need attribution, much less royalties. As a game developer, I unabashedly use AI art whenever I can. I also use public domain and royalty-free assets. The music of this YouTube video, for example, is from the YouTube audio library attributed to Kevin MacLeod in the description. It just makes economic sense to use whatever I can, however cheaply I can, to make content, apps, and games. Your mileage may vary, but I can make programs and games much quicker this way and for practically free, which is good because my games make literal pennies right now. You need to figure it out for yourself if it makes sense. Let the haters be haters. There will always be people who dislike your game, your book, your video, or anything for whatever reason, including the source of your imagery comes with the territory of being a creator or an artist. So now you know how to use image generators to make art and why you should use them as tools just like any other tools in your toolkit can help you to make these games and apps. Respect copyrights, respect the terms of service and platforms where you publish, learn as you go in terms of coding and graphic design, and of course, have fun.